One of my biggest influences was the avant-garde 20th century musician Steve Reich and his process of creating tape loops. When I first heard about that, I was massively inspired and enjoyed spending many years with cassette tape machines, playing around creating loops and creating the phasing effect and the interesting polyrhythms that you could get from layering tapes. Moving over to Logic, obviously this opens up a whole new world for us, but there is a way of applying this technique in a slightly different way, but to create interesting rhythms and interesting vocal parts and interesting melodic parts. First off, I'm going to start by creating some drum grooves. So I've gone with this a drum loop. So the first stage in this process is I'm going to take this and convert it to audio. This is a drummer file and just to make life easier because I want to chop things and do some random things with it, I'm just going to bounce this out as a audio file. And I'm just going to call this tape drum loop. So now we have tape a drum loop. This is what it sounds like as we know. The next stage is to create another loop of this. So the easiest way of doing this is just dragging this down. So now I have two versions of this. And this is where the randomness and your own ideas and your own creativity can come into this process. I'm just gonna offset this by a bar. So now we have this kind of thing happening. So that's slightly a bit mad. And one of the problems we have here is we've got a double kick drum uh, happening and it just sounds like a delayed drum loop, like we've just put that loop on a delay. So the first thing I'm going to do here as well is I'm just going to filter out some of the kicks. So we end up with the high elements of this drum loop. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So around this part here, we're getting some interesting effects starting to happen. But where this technique can get really interesting is it, I just shorten this length of the second loop. So now I'm going to loop the original drum loop for the rest of the project. I'm going to then loop this second shortened offset loop for the rest of the project. Now, if we zoom out, if we look at the little notch here, we will see that they are moving in time. And if I jump into the project at another point, we're gonna to start to hear these weird, phasing, interesting polyrhythms occurring. Again, I will jump to a later point in the project. And of course, if we were to wait long enough, eventually this would end up back in sync, although with one beat lopped off the end. Taking this one step further, let me just duplicate this track again and perhaps take this loop and offset it by a little bit more. And this time, perhaps maybe a little bit more arbitrary. I'm going to unloop it and again, bring it back in line with this. Set the loop point again, and we'll see that we're getting all of these three different loops now occurring at different times. Now, this could end up being a total mess, or it could end up being something quite interesting. Let's just try panning some of these to a different part of the... And there you see, we're getting some very interesting polyrhythmic drum loops occurring. And again, you could of course just select a selection of this to make your own drum loop from, or you could pick multiple versions because you've got this actual drum loop that is the core, and you've got all of these additional polyrhythmic variations occurring throughout the track. So you could just chop various sections where they are in sync and you like them and put them together to form your own beat collection. Another way that this could be quite effective is if we go back to our original drum loop. One of the great things about drummer is you can take this drum part and convert it directly into a MIDI part. All we need to do is select the region and drag it to another MIDI track. In this case, I'm just going to quickly drag it onto the electric piano track. 
This has now converted it into a MIDI track from an electric piano perspective. This is probably going to sound a bit weird. We definitely don't want that. But instead of electric piano, what I'm going to put on here is just a drum kit designer. And I'm going to select an electric drum kit from here. I'm going to go with, let's go with analog circuits and see what we, we have. Not bad. And all I'm going to do now is take the same approach, but using it MIDI data instead. So I'm going to duplicate these two tracks out. But this time round, not only am I going to offset this by a small amount, but I'm going to change the drum machine on the second track to let's go with uh, an 808. And then why not do it one more time? So let's zoom in a little bit there. And again, let's put this offset by a rounder amount there. Again, line these up and assign this to another random. What shall we have? I quite like the CR78. If I again, if I select all of these and loop them to the end of the project, we're going to see how they are all going out of sync with one another, but we can jump in at a spot on the timeline. The other power of this, of course, is we can then start adding all manner of effects to each of the different drum machines and each of the different drum patterns and come up with extremely fantastically intricate beats and polyrhythms. Now, this is, of course, not just limited to drum beats. We could apply this to a melodic part. So first off, I'm just going to delete these tracks and create a new software instrument. So here I've created a sculpture instrument and I'm just going to create a very simple melodic part. Okay, let me just quickly go in and quantize that part. And I'm going to take off that last note to make this just two bars long and you'll see the effect of this process can be on really really short phases so this is my first so what i'm going to do now again is i'm going to duplicate this you can see where this is going uh, i'm going to bring this down and offset it by just offsetting it i've created the same effect of adding a delay to the track so let's have a listen to what we have here so to begin with, we have the original and a delayed version. I'm also going to speed the tempo up. That's a little bit slow. All I'm going to do now is duplicate this again. We know the process. Then again, let's put this here. Again, you can still consider this as two delayed versions of the same part, but where the tape looping aspect comes in is because I've shortened these that I can now loop these across the whole project. And what we will find is as we go through that, they will start moving in and out of sync with one another, creating hopefully interesting uh, melodic ideas. So let's start jumping down. So we're getting a few notes like clashing. 
when we do have that, of course, we could pan some of these left and right. The next thing we can do is transpose one of the parts up an octave. And maybe transpose this one down an octave. for good measure. The key thing here is I'm just going to shorten this in length and then loop it. Take that back to its original octave. So what we've created if there is the effect of looping tape loops, merging into one another, creating new ideas as they go along. They can be evolving generative ideas, or you could actually just use them to find selections in the track where perhaps everything is working in better in sync with one another to give you new ideas for your project. Let's just try this section here. As you've seen in this video as part of Creative Logic Pro, there are so many ways you could manipulate and change this around to create your own interesting ideas, rhythms and melodic parts.